who influenced my dad the most was his father. He had the utmost respect for his dad. And from where his dad came, his father lost his father at a very young age. And I believe they, granddaddy had, I think, 11 other siblings. And so, you know, they all had to work together. When my dad's dad went to college, I believe it was an uncle that, that loaned him the money to get through college and then to, on to dental college. And then um, after my grandfather was graduated from dental school, uh, he actually bought a house for his mother in East Bend. It was the first house in East Bend that even had running water. But he bought a house for his mother before he bought one for himself. So it was kind of late getting married. And... Um, he ran his dental practice on 4th Street in Winston-Salem. And my dad was born like seven seven months before the great crash of 1929. And uh, his, I think, character was built by, you know, watching his, his father was very soft-spoken, but just a, I mean, you knew there was just an incredible amount of substance, you know, behind him. And um, his dad did whatever he could do to take care of his patients and his family. In his community. And then daddy would tell me that there were nights that people would call and you know wake him up in the middle of the night with a toothache. And then granddaddy would go down to the dental office to pull the tooth for free because these were people, I mean, they, no one had money in the depression. So daddy once told me, uh, I guess I was telling him what a wonderful person that he was. And he goes that he was not half the man that his father was, which was like, no way. But anyway, he had um, <clears throat> great respect for his dad. I think that's what he, <laughs> he was, um, I guess, trying to measure up to what he felt that his dad was. He treated people no matter what their circumstances were. At some point in time, he told me, you know, hey, it's, this is a lot of fun. He's like, it's a lot of fun to be able to do some things and, and know that, that, that people are gonna benefit from it. I was a garbage collector and a, a previous motorcycle mechanic. I was applying for a job at Merrill Lynch. They said, well, you don't have a college degree. Three and a half years later, I came back with a college degree. And then they said they didn't think I was quite the right fit. And Nelson, not, I didn't know Nelson, but Nelson knew me. So he went to bat for me, got me the job, and I realized that I had worked on Nelson's motorcycle uh, during the 80s at, at Honda Winston-Salem. Much more than this, I did it my way. He knew everything there was to know about Winston-Salem. He knew everyone who lived in every house in Winston-Salem and what the succession of ownership was. I mean, he, he was absolutely steeped in knowledge about local history. If someone were to pass away in the community, about the very first call we would get would be from Nelson, who would say, so-and-so passed away, I want to make a memorial contribution. We have a beautiful Book of Memory program. We often joke that he was, probably should have been on the payroll for the foundation because he was a huge champion of philanthropy he loved the, the work of the foundation and was always quick to try to make introductions. And in fact, several times went out and solicited uh, friends and associates to say, you ought to have a fund at the foundation. I think at one point he was the single, only individual to be a member of the Winston-Salem Chamber of Commerce. Like they're all businesses that were members of the Chamber of Commerce, but it was like business, 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 F. Nelson Tomlinson Jr., business, 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 business. Nelson knew what he wanted to do, particularly in the investment world. He had a strong opinion about this is what we ought to do, this is what, how we ought to do it. And as a result of that, there are a lot of very wealthy people who live in our community who did what Nelson asked them to, maybe asked them multiple times to do. I faced it all, and I stood tall, and did it my way. Here's somebody who represents the best what Davidson stands for. When you graduate from Davidson, Davidson expects that you're going to do good things and you're going to make a difference wherever you are in life. As a general rule, 
it benefited Winston-Salem or it benefited people who did not have means but worked hard. His generosity was not something that was kind of forced upon him. Lots of times when he made gifts, nobody knew it was coming. If you have a child who is served by Brenner Children's Hospital, in part you can thank the Tomlinsons, or if you have a loved one served at Arbor Acres or you're at Arbor Acres, you in fact have been touched. And I know the students at Davidson College will continue to benefit. So 50 years from now, the income into the forever will be used by the board of the foundation to make grants in the community and their legacy will continue supporting things that were important to he and Dottie during their lifetimes. I was blessed to see a little bit of the relationship uh, between Nelson and Dottie. Wish I'd seen more of that, but I can remember Davis events. Uh, he would come up in the crowd of people and he'd always have his grandmother uh, with him and say, you remember Dottie? And of course I remember Dottie, but he always wanted to make sure that she was uh, connected with him. I think he was very proud of that uh, that relationship. Uh, and golly, 60 some years of being married, what a wonderful kid. There'll never be another Nelson. We'll try, but there'll never be another Nelson. I thought that there would be some profound advice that he wanted to give somebody or anyone after his passing and, um, you know, what would that be? You know, and I was like, Daddy, what do you want me to tell the people, you know, after you're gone? And he just said, well, I guess bye-bye. <laughs> yes, it was my